You are listening live to the web stream of Morning Session of Fresh, Circostrada Network. And uh, I can see uh, Katie Kirji Watts waiting <laughs> for the panelists to join her. Uh, there will be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And uh, now they are settled with the summer water, as you can listen to. We wanted to talk with Fabian Brugger, but we didn't have time. Maybe we'll uh, join her later on. You remember she said, uh, be careful about the care. She also asked for new institutions, like Fresh could be a new institution for care. She also uh, mentioned the Stig Dagerman with this uh, book, The Désir de Consolation. She talks about the, the, the need, the desire, this desire of care. I think Emily is here. And Emily is, right. and yeah. Emily is here, so morning session roundtable live streaming. <laughs> Emily is Emily Bustel with a yellow t-shirt. Okay, good morning. <laughs> uh, my name is Katie. I'm going to be facilitating this roundtable with these six lovely people here. Um, and thank you to Circo Strada for the invitation. Um, I'm very happy to be here. So I'm just going to go ahead and start. Um, little introduction before we start today. Um, so about a month ago, I was starting to prepare to host this panel, and I decided to take a quick look um, on the web page that Circostrata created for this conference. And in the pre-program for this morning's sessions, I saw a very interesting question, which, by the way, doesn't come from me. Um, and the question, which comes from the Circostrata team, is this. Can I have the next slide, please? I don't have my, there we go. This is the question. How to establish a reliable relationship and avoid the power relationship usually induced between the programming curator and the artist? And this question, it really made me think. You know, I thought, are reliable relationships those in which interpersonal or interorganizational power dynamics avoided? So as I was kind of mentally chewing on this question, I happened to reread a passage in a book called Mating Captivity, which was written by Esther Perel. Now, Esther Perel, for those of you who don't know, is a world-renowned psychotherapist with an international background who specializes in intercultural relationships. Next slide, please. In her book, she writes that, the ideal partnership is said to be one of absolute equality in every area of their relationship. Many of us, steeped in an ideology of fairness and mutuality, want nothing less. But the fact is that negotiating power is part of all human relationships. Power imbalances are inescapable. So, we are here today to talk about care. But that discussion takes place in a context. Now, our context today, the International Professional Contemporary Circus and Outdoor Arts Sector, is multifaceted and complex. And so, in discussing with the team at Circo Strada and in reading the question which you saw up here, um, I understand that that context includes the unequal distribution of power between different actors. But if Esther Perel is right, those power discrepancies can never be solved once and for all. They can only be managed. My hunch is that care cannot help us fix power differentials, but rather they could provide us with a framework, a set of values and related actions, if you will, that helps us navigate our relationships, even those at work. Before I give the floor to the group gathered here today, because I know we're here primarily to hear them and not me, I'd just like to clarify what we're going to try and do for the next hour and a half or so. Together, the seven of us had a pre-panel meeting, and it turned out that no one felt that they were some kind of expert on care, which is just fine. 
Um, so what I propose to the group and what they bravely accepted is that we're going to try and have a discussion that hopefully is going to feel like an experience of thinking out loud together in this moment about what care could look like and mean for this sector specifically. Now, that's a very vulnerable thing to do in front of your peers, <laughs> um, especially when you're speaking in your second or your third language, which I believe all of you will be. Um, so I would just like to acknowledge how courageous that is and to say thank you for doing that and to ask all of you listening to do so with some patience and goodwill. In French, you would say bienveillance. And now it's my great pleasure to give the floor to our six panelists. Um, could you each please stand up while I introduce you? Then everyone knows who you are. <laughs> First, we have Kuhn. Kuhn. <laughs> Kuhn. Kuhn currently works as the co-coordinator of Dance Punt in Ghent, which supports the dance scene in Flanders. Did I get it right? That's right. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much. Next. And, um, the other co-coordinator is also a Kuhn. Also so Kuhn. It's a okay. bit, bit uh, comedy. Double Kuhn. <laughs> yeah, double Kuhn. <laughs> Thank you so much. We also have Emily and Marie. You can sit down. <laughs> which is Emily? Emily is and Marie. Yeah, Emily is yellow, okay, and Marie is green, okay. Emily and Marie are the co-founders and the co-directors of Sauf le Dimanche in Montpellier and Paris, a dance company specializing in site-specific performance. You get it right? Yeah. Wonderful. Then we have Sebastian. <laughs> Sebastian is the director general of Espacio Czechoslovakia in Santiago, a residency center for artistic development and production with strong ties to the working class neighborhood where it's based. And Sebastian also has a background as a professional performer. Thank you. Thank you. Next we have Anna. Anna is the artistic director of Fira Tarega in Tarega, an organization supporting the performing arts in Catalonia with a focus on street art and public space. Wonderful, thank you, Anna. And finally, we have Lucho. Lucho is the new artistic director of Festival Circolo in Tilburg, which is the largest circus festival in the Netherlands. Luco, Lucho also has an extensive background as a circus artist and a performer, and co-founded the company Galapia Cirque, which some of you might know. Did I get it right? Thank you so much, Lucho. Okay, let's dive into our panel. Um, you guys already know this, so Sal doesn't know it. Um, we're, I'd like to ask each of you, um, just quickly as a way to kind of open up the panel and also to underline the fact that we're a very international group today, how you, how you would translate the word care into your native language or one of the other non-English -English languages that you speak. Um, the reason I want to start with this, it's, it's not a question of getting it perfectly right, it's really your unique, creative, personal choice about the way that you translate care. Um, and just to kind of share that word with us, why you picked it, and what kind of associations does that word hold for you? So when I say associations, I mean things like images, qualities, actions, colors, things like this. Um, I happen to speak French uh, as well as English, Not, no other languages, unfortunately. and. Uh, Fabienne, I think, was translating care in a few different ways, uh, soin, uh, bienveillance, and things like this. But uh, um, those are all excellent choices, of course. For me, they don't always capture everything about what I understand when I hear the term care in English. So I'm just interested to hear about what is captured, what is lost, what is added when we bring in other languages and, uh, trans and we, we see care through the vision of uh, multilingualism. So. Who to pick to start? Anna. Yes. <laughs> Please give us uh, give us your answer. Um, good morning and thanks thanks for the invitation. It's it's a pleasure to be to be here and it's impressive to be in front of all of you. So care in Catalan, which is my mother language, and also in in, in Spanish, means take care of something or take care of of a person. 
in what's the word? Kura. Kura. Deni kura. Okay, kura. It's it's quite quite similar. Kura, kura, cure, yeah. And it also uh, could be uh, when you are doing something very very precise and you do you want to do it very well, you have to take care of doing that very well. And then there is another exception of uh, definition which means take care when the body when the body is injured. So that means take care of the body in terms of physicality, more or less. Thank you so much. Um, Emily. <laughs> so I'm going to speak in French. I'll give my own personal um, definition. Pour moi, c'est une. Euh, comment je le traduirais uh, en, en français I translate care as uh, considering the whole uh, situation so as to respect everybody's uh, place and person. Your personal definition, um, what are the feelings or associations or images that might come when you're, when you're developing this personal definition of, of care in your language? Les images, les couleurs, euh, les actions, les, les moments de vie euh, qui, pour toi, sont liés avec cette définition personnelle du, du care. Euh, pour moi, c'est la notion de... So, uh, tu, tu parlais tout à l'heure de... You were speaking uh, about taking into consideration the uh, discrepancies of uh, power relations, uh, saying that uh, these discrepancies in power uh, still existed. When you're dancing and trying to find the balance, you always try to find the lack of balance. Uh, you know, if uh, you put yourself on one foot, you uh, always are to try to find in your body where exactly you can find your new balance. It has nothing to do with being rooted. It has to do with a permanent search. How would you translate care into one of your languages? What's uh, the word or the phrase for you? In Dutch or uh, Flemish, it's a bit like Klingon, like uh, the language of Star Trek. Zor! <laughs> <laughs> it's like that. <laughs> so, uh, Zor. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's very inclusive. Uh, <laughs> uh, and one of the main issues uh, of care for me, it's like in the keynote, it's the word empathy. That uh, it's so important if you talk about care that we have uh, uh, lots of empathy in our relationship with artists, with uh, public. With for me, that's uh, one of the most important angles to. Uh, to talk about care, um, and I'm very glad, I think it's the first time in my career, and I'm an old fox, that we're also uh, talking about power, because uh, we're all, it's, it's, it's a bit awkward to talk about power, but we're all powerful in one way or another, and we have to have lots of empathy to, to, to uh, develop uh, care uh, without power. Thank you so much. Um, Lucho. Yes, uh, Kuhn already had a beautiful introduction. Uh, I sp uh, my mother tongue is Dutch as well, so zorg. Um, <laughs> zorg. <laughs> uh, which, which literally translates as uh, care and uh, maybe this has more to do with my background, but the first things that come up, uh, Zorg, is uh, how much it costs to take care of our elderly and our sick. Uh, the people that are on strike because they demand better pay and better recognition. 
And um, this is generally what Zorg is about in um, Holland. Um, in this context, in our context, um, I would think and I would like um, uh, to go more towards what Kuhn and also uh, Fabienne said in her uh, keynote, uh, this yeah, collective responsibility, uh, this image of the hive where all these bees in this ecosystem, they make things together and they are all responsible for, you know, uh, 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 making things happen. And uh, caring, it's a, it's a shared responsibility. Uh, yeah. And I would quickly like to react also to the citation you had in your introduction. Um, that uh, these power uh, relations or dynamics, that they are, they are inherent to human relationships, that we cannot escape them. Um, uh, maybe it's a question we can ask, uh, uh, should we therefore embrace them? Yeah. Just a provocative question. Yeah. yeah, I didn't necessarily intend to, to have it, but because it's a question that Circo Strata had, and I thought it was important not to ignore the question of power and power relations, and I thought it was interesting to take this specific doorway into care uh, as being somehow a way of mm, navigating power in a way that sometimes can feel, as someone said, awkward or uncomfortable to, to talk about. So, um, Sebastian. <laughs> yeah. Um. Uh, hi everyone. Um, um, uh, I am I'm really thank you to be here for the invitation. Um, I'm a little nervous, uh, you can see. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm from Chile and I have to say sorry for my English. Uh, I'm coming from the public education and this is the result. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, um, yeah. <laughs> About care um, in Spanish, uh, in Castellano, um, cuidado, I think is the word, but in English could be be careful too. Yeah, um, I will invent now a little bit. Um, care for me sounds very similar to core, you know, and like in a, I don't know, it's a Latin word, but core is a corazón. I think it's about love, it's about empathy too, and it's, it's a really big word, but I think I can explain me with one example uh, better. Um, I am a father, uh, two kids, uh, six and three years old, and I think I, I take care of them all the time, but not in the... A patriarchal uh, way, you know. I think it's to be attend um, how we, they are, if they need something, if they change the personality uh, in some second. Um, I think to it's about to give the power, to give independence, autonomy. I don't know. I think it's uh, basically uh, being with them, uh, close to them, and attend what is happening. I think that is could be my definition. Thank you so much, Kuhn. I believe you have a little something to add. <laughs> I like to react uh, to be a father, and I have a bunch of kids. Uh, it's, just, it's also important to say no in a clear way. And that's also care, to say, no, you don't uh, get my car. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yes, yes, of course. It's more difficult to eat here, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In that way, to, when you give the power, when you give independence, you see something that you don't want to see. Uh, yeah. It's difficult to, to have a care with, with ourselves first, 
and after that with the others. Thank you so much, and thank you for bringing in this idea of family and children, because I think that a lot of um, a lot of people who are really thinking about care and articulating what it can be are, are often talking about the roles, intergenerational relationships. So thank you for that. Um, Marie, yeah, it's your turn. Je crois qu'en français, moi, je choisirais les mots qui sont attendus. Uh, attention and consideration. I like this uh, word consideration in French because I think um, it makes me think about uh, an attitude to uh, get in relation with uh, an environmental person and even an artistic object. I think consideration uh, sort of obliges me to think that care uh, demands time, and uh, maybe it would be uh, interesting to actually speak about the necessity of uh, patience and time uh, in your relationship with things and people in general. Uh, before uh, having this uh, sort of uh, reflex we may have, uh, that it is reassuring uh, to uh, get in touch or get in a relationship with somebody once we know where we are. And I think we have to be uh, more uh, careful uh, in, in order to give more room to our intuition, to be more curious and less knowing, maybe. I don't know about you, I noted about uh, 50 words here, so that's a lot of material. Um, so thank you again for sharing your knowledge and your, your language and your, your personal definition. Um, I wanted to um, center today's discussion around three big questions, which I hope we'll have the time to get to all of them. Um, the first one I want to to us to try and approach is what forms of care is it appropriate to expect to give or receive in the context of a professional arts practice, community, uh, working life, etc. Um, and I'd like to start uh, with a bit of a flip because I think that when we think about the flow of care, it's probably more typical to think about artists need care and support organizations, residencies, theaters, venues, festivals, what have you, are giving the care. So I want to switch it up a bit and first ask the people here who are, have a role as a hat, as a curator, um, how can we make this idea of care a bit more of a two-way street? So how do you, uh, like as a curator, as an organizational representative, do you feel like you can or you could expect an artist or an artistic company to care for you and for your organization? How does this question uh, land for you, basically? So, and I feel you having a reaction, so maybe you would like to start. <laughs> no, I, I, I said, wow, because in, in my position, I'm always the one who try to ask them, how are you? What are your needs in terms of, of, of creation? But maybe I don't give them a space to ask, what do we need? Sometimes these uh, feedbacks, we get it from after the festival when we send them some, some questions about, well, uh, could we be better in terms of accommodation or in terms of, you know, of, 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 of fees or whatever. But in terms of creation, sometimes we, we, we didn't ask so directly. But that brings me to talk about, um, to have time to listen to them. For me, I'm coming from a family, we are a butchers, and you know when you're going to a butch, you, you, you need time. I mean, it's not like picking up a piece of, of, of chicken and go away. So you, you need time, and I'm, I'm my, I'm my dad and my mom, they're always asking them, how are you today? Uh, how's it going? How is your family? And they have a seat, they have, my dad sometimes sings a song, you know, it's, it's like a good atmosphere. And I grew up in the, 
in this atmosphere when I have the need always to ask to the rest of the people, how are you? How are you feeling today? And in, in Firatarga, which is the, the organization I'm, I'm working with, um, every single morning I try to go with our team to have a coffee. And for me, this, uh, this is a very special moment. This is a very special moment to ask to our team, how are you today? Do you need something? Because in terms of care, if I really want, of, if, we, if we really want to take care of our artists or the artists we want to present in the next edition, first of all, I think that we have to take care of the colleagues we are working with. And it's a simple thing. It's just have a coffee with them. And sometimes we talk about silly things. And sometimes you realize that my colleague, maybe he doesn't feel good and maybe it's something related with this family, whatever, but it's probably important to, to give them time to talk and to listen. We always are talking, talking and talking, but it's when I'm learning the most is when I'm having a seat, I shut up and I listen from them. So I think that we, we should have more time in terms or having a seat and, and exchange in terms of how you feel, how much you need, how can I help you, do, do you think I can help you, or maybe it's not myself, but maybe Luce can help them. So we, we, need have, we need time to talk and, and have time. But somebody told me, we never have time, we never have time. And another friend told me, no, you're wrong. Time is the only thing we have. We just have time. But we don't know when that time will end. It's our responsibility to decide if we distribute this time with our colleagues, with our artists, with our family, which is more, more it's also more important. So communication and spend time with the artists, with the distributors, with the creators, with the other programmers in order to know how are they, how they're feeling, how can improve these conditions or, or wherever. <laughs> Hello? Ah, there we go. Um, I don't know if Kuhn, Sebastian, Lucho, you have something that you would like to add. Again, the question here is, uh, as, a represent as a curator, as a representative of an organization, do you feel like you can or could expect an artist or company to care for you and for the organization that you represent? Lucho, I feel like you grabbed the mic, so please have at it. <laughs> I was not exactly going to talk to uh, this point. Uh, that's fine. But I do feel that there is something in uh, the relationship and in care uh, that can be massively improved. Um, and I'm talking now from my experience as a maker, um, uh, is that um, when you ask for an opportunity or uh, you ask for a grant to perform somewhere or just for feedback. It is very difficult to be honest uh, in these kind of exchanges because you're talking about something that uh, can be sensitive. Um, and I think just honesty and being able to talk about an object, an artistic creation, a work uh, honestly, uh, would help and would improve massively the kind of uh, relation uh, makers and uh, curators could have. Uh, and it's something I've uh, always tried to do as a maker with my peers. Uh, now that uh, I also get questions, hey, I would like to perform in your festival, would you maybe come to see the work or what did you think of the work? Uh, I try to keep this up, but I feel also that in the position I am in, uh, somehow I have to be more careful uh, about how I say things or put things. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, which, uh, uh, yeah, is too bad, uh, I think. Yeah. I would actually like to ask Kun to uh, bounce off on this because uh, a bit this question came up in our pre-meeting uh, 
this like grain of sand or something like this in the relationship of like wanting to be honest, maybe not wanting to hurt feelings, which is which is worse. How do we deal with uncomfortable opinions, things like this? So Kun, please take the floor. I really agree what you said. Hello. I really agree what you said, uh, Lucio, but it's so important that we as curators or directors of coordinators are very clear in, in, in that we are good in clear communication. For example, and the French are top in it to avoid uh, <laughs> direct uh, communication. I was at the premiere. And then the French are talking uh, to each other and to other colleagues like me. Oh, it was quite interesting, the, his show, but I couldn't enter his universe. And, and the artist can, is not programmed. It's better to say very clear uh, to the artist, no, it didn't work for me for that, that, and that reason. It's not a joke. It's really not a joke. I have still ideas to develop... Uh, festivals and things uh, like that and I want to develop a festival of uh, the last shows because it's always a party and I was an artist, I was talking to artists about it. I was an artist who was telling to me, uh, do you agree to uh, organize a festival of the bad shows? <laughs> I thought it was a joke but it wasn't a joke. He said it's so important for us because our aim is not to creation. And then we are not programmed, and we want to talk about it. We want to share why, why are we not programmed. And for other artists, it's also important to know why a show doesn't work. I cannot imagine that I'm the coordinator of such a festival. Oh, I didn't like your show. You're welcome. But it's so important. <laughs> but it's so important to to be clear in our communication also. Um, I'm working a lot with emerging artists, and that's the other direction. It's so important also that they dare to, to say what they need. And they're emerging artists, that they're kind of... Uh, they, I'm, my, my mother said always, uh, even the king, when he's going to the toilet, he has to clean his butt. And, and that's what I try to give to the emerging artists. I'm just uh, a person like them. So ask clearly what you need. And then we as an organization are, are going to look at it, if it fits in what in our, in our means, in our, what we have. But, so we have really uh, work on our communication in both directions. I'd like to uh, bring Marie and Emily into the conversation because uh, you're both working as artists and running a company. And uh, I don't want to insist too much on this question, but I, I think it's just an interesting way to approach it. Maybe I'm not correct, but uh, maybe just do, do you feel like you have some kind of responsibility or desire or question about you as an artist can care for a funder, a residency program, a programmer, a support organization of any kind? Or do you really feel like the, the flow is always supposed to be that the care comes to you as an artist across this divide, again, this question of power differential, power relationships between artists, artistic companies and programming or other kinds of support organizations? So. Um, tout à l'heure, quand tu as posé Daniel, cette question, question, je me suis entendue penser la I chose suivante. En fait, c'est pas possible autrement. It can't be different in reality. We just we never talk about it. It's not unnamed in this sector. It's a blind spot. Emily and I have kind of unique projects which are performed in non-stage uh, sites, but are not exactly public spaces. We do work there too, but not only. And all of those creations require a form of discussion and partnership with the programmer. Obviously, we're often in a conventional relationship with either you buy my show 
or you don't and you take it where you want to. And a lot with our projects, these relationships um, require, well, in our projects, we need more discussion. And we've become obsessed with that, so Emily and I. We've been working for 20 years now with our company. And these forms really pushed us to try and think about it. I didn't really named it as taking care of one another, but at least together to ask where the interest of both parties is and how could these two circles of interests, of interest, how can they overlap and where in this, where, how can we overlap in this place in this show, it's not the same. Even with the same show, the, the overlap won't be the same, depending on where it's performed, the audiences, the uniqueness of each partner. And in, also what Lucho was saying, in Kuhn, Kuhn was saying, it's a bit of an anecdote, I'm sorry, but it seems it seems symbolic of what we're talking about, where I have a friend who's the director of a theatre in Brittany who said recently, at the end of a show, the artist came and asked what she thought of it. And she said, do you, do you want to know if what I thought of it or if I'll buy it? And I went like, oh my God, you didn't say that. They didn't say that. And yes, she did. And she said, the interesting thing, what you're talking about is that if you ask my opinion, I start working with you. And I'll try to be in a communication, which even if she's French and try to go around it, to try to work together in a discussion so that we can say things that you can bear to hear as well. You have to be able to hear what people say to you when you ask them that kind of question. And if the subject is really to know whether I'm going to buy the show or not. The answer is different. So this clarity is important. It's not easy for an artist, but it is an exercise that's interesting to do, to be clear in what question we're really asking and what answer you want. And that can change depending on the moment. I also feel like it should go both ways. And even before you program something, companies have a lot of responsibility to take care of going to see partners, potential partners, and going to get information to make sure they see the right people. Because we've got newsletters and lots of means of communication that, that are out there to invite programmers to come to see our work, but we're kind of shooting out, uh, making a broad, throwing a broad net, and maybe it's not a service to our relationship because we aim for the wrong people. When you, when you spray your invitation very large and you pray someone will <laughs> answer you, basically. Um, I want to maybe uh, have one follow-up question to, I guess, Emilie and Marie, which is, um, do you think that your way of working, this approach to mostly be outside of traditional venues and spaces, do you think that that... Um, gives you a different perspective or approach or necessity of having these conversations that someone who is in maybe in a more traditional uh, way of making a, a performance product to be bought by a venue is uh, maybe like, is do you think that do you suspect or know that there's a difference in the way that you're working outside of traditional venues versus the, a more traditional curator uh, a relationship that happens in a more traditional relationship of a product performance and a, and a venue. Je pense que c'est très différent parce que nous quand on arrive dans un lieu, on est jamais when we get to a place, nobody's expecting us to be there. Dans le sens où in the, on est souvent dans des lieux où les, les the gens that we're often in places where people have never seen a show performed there before, and in particular, a contemporary dance performance. 
Il y a une approche. There's an approach. J'imagine un chat quoi. A bit like a cat. We kind of come a bit, creep in a little softly. Maybe a little bit more. And then we look at each other. And then we start talking. But all that time, we, take, we must take it all the time in the places we go to. It's very delicate as a process. And it's never uh, something we can take for granted. I would just say that the preparation discussion we had made me realize that because it's part of our artistic work that's choreographically what we're working on that has overflowed into all parts of our work and it's created something which is a different way <laughs> of, of dancing coup, with the partners, espaces, the spaces, the audiences, oui, and with our own teams. Que... Sebastian, I'm going to ask you uh, if you have a perspective you'd like to share on this question. Uh, you know, what kinds, what forms of care is it appropriate to expect to give or receive? in a relationship between artist and curator, company and support organization, and uh, how can this be a two-way street? So please, uh, the floor is yours. Well, I think it's super important to have a really good and honestly communication. Uh, it's important to have not only one channel to have a communication, uh, to have a different channels. Um, formal, uh, not formal, channel two. I think for us, uh, when I talk about us, I talk about for me and my team, uh, for us, it's really important um, to create one ecosystem, yeah? Where everyone is important there and everyone feel themselves important there. Yeah, um, for example, I will do, I will say some examples. Um, for example, for us in our creative center, uh, if it's an artist go inside to, to work in, to the, in the center, if they uh, look at the neighbors working in the garden and talking with, with, the, with our team, um, asking them and start to, to, to feel part of something and feel part important to something. I think everyone here, the human spaces, we need to feel part of something more today. It's super difficult to have a life alone without uh, some objectives, without some human things, I th in my opinion. And it's really important to uh, go together and go like a society, uh, not um, myself, or not going only myself or ourselves with my small group. I think it's important to be really open, really sensitive. It's important to hear the other people, listening to other people, uh, take time to listen. It's important to listen to the old people. I think the old people have many things to say. I remember to my grandmother, to one woman with a lot of care, because I think she understood the life. And I think the life is about that. It's about to, to create trust and trust each other. And then we can see in front, like an equal, like a similar, like a important guys, important people. And in that kind of a scenario context, uh, we can start to talk, we can start to work and create. That is so important. What's for you, old people? What's the age? Ah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> good question. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. To be honest, be honest. 
70 or more, 75, 80, old people, old people. Yeah, I am old too. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing this example. Um, I'd like to move on and, I mean, what you have mentioned today are things that you think are, you know, maybe missing a little bit or time or a sense that we have enough time, honesty, clear communication, the time to really hear and listen to each other, a sense of belonging, a sense of trust. Um, and so I'd like to maybe dig a level underneath and say, what is, what is keeping us from having these things? Or what is keeping us from perceiving that we have these things? So what are the barriers? You know, like what is one or two maximum key elements that you feel like you're chronically missing in your professional life that would really allow you to demonstrate care in the way that you want? in your professional life, especially across this supposed divide between artist and curator or company and support organization? Like, what's keeping you from being able to act care in the way that you want to? Or or if it doesn't work for you to receive care in this way? I see Lucho having a response, so please take the floor. Uh, I would say the two things that we imagine always keep us from doing this is uh, time and money, always. Uh, we never have enough time and we never have enough money, but then that's just in our heads. Uh, I would say that if there's something keeping me uh, from being able to care and invest in um, uh, the relation that I have with uh, colleagues and with uh, others. Ah, it slipped my mind. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to have to get back to you on this one. Uh, it, uh, I went, I went there, and then uh, I couldn't get back uh, to speaking. Sorry. Anna, do you want to go ahead? I can, I can. Please. I can go, and then you you think about it. Uh, I think that we need time. In our in our case, uh, I'm the artistic director of our organization, and I'm the first woman leading the artistic department since 40 years. And it's the first time that the team uh, at some point had to realize that I was pregnant. So it was the first time that my team recalls all, you know, all the artistic decisions and I was on maternity leave and, and they, they did it very well, but it, 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 it was a first a step. And that takes time when you get into an organization that, that, that you want to to change step by a step. Of course, you need money, but then you also need time because the things are changing one day from the other day. So it, it, it takes time. And yesterday, we had a fabulous dinner with some colleagues. And I told them, I don't know why they asked me to talk about care. What, what I could say, I'm, I'm... And they were, why not you? Well, like, I was sh nearly shocked. And, and, and they told me the way that now uh, the team is listen. I'm, I'm back again with the communication of, and listen. The way that now the team is listen, the proper team, the team is listen, the artist, the team is listen, that sector, it's changed since, since it goes on the past. Slowly, slowly, because it, it, it takes time. So for me, Money on the one side, of course, and then time. Money, why? Because the artists still in Catalonia on the street arts are, they are still on precarity. So they need the stability. So how we as organization, how we as a director that now I have kind of power to improve things, how can we um, improve the conditions of the artists who are uh, working on street arts, and for me is having time to listen to them, to, to listen what are their needs, and trying on the other side to improve the touring, to give them more opportunities, and be very clear on the criteria of selection. And it's, I think that is our duty when we don't select a show, and the artist is asking us why you don't select our show, for me, it's an ethic to explain them. 
in a good way. That's the criteria. That's why we are not supporting um, the, the, the show. And then you can you can also explain other things on propose to go other or other venues or wherever. Right? For me, it's our duty to be honest with them and with yourself and, and give them information. So this change for a place where is a market where we are doing is to put um, shows on the platform in order to be seen for a lot of programmers. Since 10 years now, we are developing an uh, artistic change program where the artists are teaching us how to be better. These two ladies here, I remember, they are part of in situ. And they came up to us and we want to make something. We want to make something with a Catalan company because we have something similar. Uh, the other company was Electrico 28. They were on the theater field and they are on the, on the dance field. And they proposed to make an explore residency. We are a market. Uh, our goal is uh, to present end shows. Or, but they were proposing us an explore residency with a no ending show, just uh, showing uh, methodologies and showing knowledge. So they were teaching us how to be better, how to be honest, how to accompany better the artists. So we need time and we need, of course, money. And now I think that Lucho already uh, remember the, the idea. <laughs> I would gladly give the word to someone else because I feel we're monopolizing the, the space here. If you, if you have remembered... Yeah, I have. Please, please yes. go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what I wanted to say is that what is really uh, keeping us from uh, investing in the care or having the right care towards our colleagues uh, is that it's not so much time and money, it is, uh, that we always end up playing the role that is projected upon us uh, in some kind of way. Um, it's maybe a bit uh, strange to understand this. Um, can you give an example? Uh, yes, I can give an example. Uh, this, is, um, this is many years back. Uh, we had a residency in a psychiatric hospital and uh, it's a big institution, uh, maybe... Uh, uh, 2,000 uh, patients, a very, very big institution. And uh, it was a three-month residency, and uh, the afternoons we ate together with the team in the, in the cafeteria. Uh, and uh, it's uh, October, it's a bit cold. Uh, I'm outside the main building. I'm, uh, you know, I'm a bit like this. I forgot my sweater in the caravan. And there's a little family that comes out of the main building, uh, a mother, a father, and a little girl. And the little girl, she's far away, they're 30 meters away, she starts pointing at me. And I thought, oh, they must think I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, 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 a, I'm a patient here. And whatever I did, I could not get away from the image that was on me. And whatever I did, you can stop, you can uh, move away, you can walk, you can... it gets worse. Uh, <laughs> you end up playing the role that is projected upon you. Okay, this is um, an extreme example. Uh, but it happens, okay, he's an artist, so in, uh, in, a, in some kind of social context, whatever you say, they're going to think you're funny, or they're going to say, oh, that's interesting, or, um, and, and this is what you end up doing. And also as a curator, okay, he's a curator, he's going to have the power to say yes or no, and uh, in the address or in the perception, um, uh, there is something, and maybe this is why these power relations in the citation you showed earlier are uh, inevitable, maybe this is why, because we end up playing the role that is projected upon us, in my opinion. I think, I think you, what I'm hearing you say is that we internalize certain uh, imagined or real aspects of, of, of a role and we, instead of consciously choosing to take them on, we, we feel a bit imprisoned by this somehow. What about the four of you over here? Anyone want to ha talk about this idea of what's keeping us from caring or receiving care in this sector the way that you want to? What's the barriers? I think personally, sometimes a lack of uh, courage. Of, uh, personally, it's it's hard to, I mean, you, uh, 
And when you're working with emerging artists, it's hard to say no. It's hard to say no because your ideas, your your tryouts uh, don't work, and we it, it's 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 it, it it hurts me myself to to say to to them, and sometimes I'm also a bit slippery talking to to avoid. So for me personally, it's it's also to develop a kind of uh, courage, and uh, in, I think in the Netherlands they uh, developed uh, das art, and uh, that's a mythology uh, to communicate between the public and the artists. And maybe Circo Strada can organize once a workshop about a mythology, uh, about how we professionals can communicate with artists and in the other way. Sebastian? Yeah. I, want to, I, uh, I want to say something important for, for us. Um, I think um, uh, we... We have a uh, we have a program different. Pro uh, I think many uh, people here uh, have uh, the same problem: residence, uh, co-production, production. And I think the important is not what we do. The important, the most important is how how we do. Uh, that is the most important. For example, you can say no to something, but it's the really important how you say no. You can say no. Don't answer the email, for example. It's some way to say no. But if you have a meeting with the guy and, and you start to, to listen the the, the 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 things, and after that you say why you you think no is the best option now, now, today, maybe not tomorrow, maybe next year, the people can understand you better. It's really important uh, how we can say no. And, and, and another thing uh, is important uh, too, I think, we can have uh, care with our artists, with our team, but for me it's super difficult to have care on the office and then on the street, no, don't have care. I think uh, it's really difficult, but if you want to be like that, you have to be care all day, every week, all day on the week. Uh, it's difficult to change the, the switch on the street, be like uh, nothing is happening, and you come into the office and you are really open, really... I think that you have to be consequent with yourself. Um, and this, and I think, uh, is important. Emily and Marie... Uh do you have something to add to this idea of what might be keeping you from uh, receiving or giving care? Like, what, what's the barriers again? What's this? What's what's the blocks? <laughs> I was thinking like courage is probably an element there. And then I thought tools also. It kind of goes over the idea of time in a certain way. I really feel like I belong to a generation where the alternatives uh, experience are, uh, there are tools for everything everywhere, but I can't embrace the whole or to make it a leap out of my strict field. So I kind of lacking time in the sense that I can't get out of uh, beyond the rails of the sector of, the, of culture that I'm in, it has no meaning today, you say, to, to being alone in, in life, but even, even alone in whatever you're doing, just yourself, we, we can't, there's no meaning today to try to be all alone, so then the, the question of means comes up, can you include in a dance projection, can you, can you budgetize um, artistic moments, but like uh, times for uh, looking for spaces that would nourish the tools in the term of uh, taking care of our imagination, as uh, our philosopher said earlier, and, and taking care of our teams, how can you incorporate that into like a residency. Uh, <laughs> uh, 
C'est vraiment des questions très complexes. Parce very que, complex questions. Euh, avec Marie, on prend, Marie and I, on, on prend vraiment soin we really de take team, care of our teams, but we quickly uh, get caught bon. up very often uh, par des, uh, by des injonctions un peu extérieures de, de, de finances, de problems to de do with budgets de, de, and finances de and decisions uh, de compagnies un peu plus générales uh, based on the more general company based longue, questions for the longer fait, term and sometimes we trip over and we announce things, things to dancers that we shouldn't have it's the wrong time to announce it and we create an imbalance and throws everyone off and Enfin, voilà, on, we're not on always de, kind of navigating en permanence, all the time en and trying to readjust all the time. And I feel that in our relationship with programmers, uh, it's the same la, with curators. La relation, elle, elle the relationship être, cannot, elle peut pas être figée, elle is not pas, fixed. It's not, on peut pas donner we can't give the role and the role. We can't separate the roles uh, programmer, artist, and separate them completely. Moi, I feel que, like we need before once you have once the relationship well we've, we know Anna for example we've met already it's easier to take care at that point but it's before that before you meet a curator I send an email first email and I wait and answer for an answer. Do I nudge them? What do I do with this? Do I do that? And that gets a bit tough. There are people that I've been waiting. There's a people I've been waiting to get an appointment with for 18 months. People who are not far from me, not the other end of the world. People who are close by. And I'm waiting for some. Tell me why. It's not a minister I'm talking to here. A year, a year and a half is a long time to wait to meet with someone. But it's very disimbalanced. I keep going, waiting. I keep still waiting painfully for this appointment, and painfully I'm not receiving an answer. I find that difficult. Thank you all for sharing that. How are you guys doing in the audience? We're good. Not too tired. We've got about 20 minutes left. I hope that um, we can hold your attention. This is kind of the last terrain that I wanted us to go to this morning. Um, and it's the topic of gender. Because I don't think that we can talk about care without talking about the fact that traditionally it's a word that holds very different implications for men and for women or for people who don't identify with either of those words. And um, I suppose that one of the things that I personally worry about is this possibility of the less glamorous or more tedious or less visible aspects of care sort of being shunted unofficially, mostly to women, uh, without them being recognized or compensated in some way for this labor. Um, so, I guess my question is, how do we make sure it's not the same group of people that are getting uniquely burdened over and over again with the majority of caring responsibilities? I see Marie is uh, maybe having a, a reaction to this. <laughs> I have a lot, of, a lot of thoughts come to my mind. I might be a bit confused, but I'll try to be brief and uh, work my way through it. I first of all thought, I started thinking we, sh we shouldn't ask this question. If we don't, as a personal and professional uh, point of view, I can't do what I'm about to say, but I would like to sidestep this issue and ignore the possibility that it wouldn't be shared. As a woman, if I can just pretend that the possibility 
of me having to take on that charge by myself, then I'd be inducing a different reaction, a different reality. I, don't, I prefer not to even consider that it's a possibility that all of that responsibility could fall on me as a woman. Sorry, I unjustly. In the last uh, 20 minutes of the, <laughs> of the panel. Anyone else want to? Uh, it's just this topic of <laughs> cares and gendered <laughs> words. What, how do you feel about this? Like, how do we make sure it's not just women or another sort of marginalized group of people, be it, it could be women, it could also be sort of the, the, the lowest <laughs> status, lowest paid people in organizations that are doing this work. Uh, this is just a question I have, you know. C'est une question tout à fait importante, très, Very très important. importante. Very important question. Poser, When you started uh, asking that question, I wanted, exemple, in our case, we have a company Be, if two, two, two minds and two women. We call, if we've called our company Sofle Dimanche, which means an, except for Sunday, we, we said, could we do this job, this, be in this profession, by, but leaving the possibility in our lives to, to, to move? And as women, we were 20 when we met. Uh, it took, and after five years, we mounted our company, and then we had to leave a possibility for having children, for our lives to change, our, st our situation to change, even geographically change, and our promise that we made to one another and that we have respected, and it's the base for everything, is that leave the possibility for the other one to experience and live what she needs to go through. Emily has three children, I have two. It's a sport. It's very, very extra. It's a lot. As I, as I said at, at the beginning, um, I'm the first woman directing the, the Frida Targa. And to be honest, and uh, I, I didn't feel like prepared to assume at that moment to be the artistic director. My background is not from the arts, it's from the economics, and I have a lot of fragilities day after day, even now. And, but now it came to my mind a thing is like, I didn't have a, a woman reference for me in terms of street art, so uh, why not? Why, why I don't try to write a project and try to direct organization, not on my own, definitely. I have a brilliant team, but we, we can try. And after five years, I've been learning a lot from you, from them, from the artists. And is it possible? Is it possible? But it is hard because, as I said also, I had a baby. And Fabien said at the lecture, we have to take care of ourselves. And we have to put the person on the middle in terms of care. How can you manage that when it's the first time that you are leading a, a, a market and, and, and you have just four years or five years and everybody's asking and everybody's pushing and everybody's demanding of you? How you manage that? How can we stop? Because uh, it's very important also to take care of our personal life. And on that time, women have a, a most difficult situation in, in, in that subject. That is a, it's, it's a reality. Uh, but after five years, I think I could do the same because it's important, because it's political, and because now I have the opportunity to explain that in front of Of, of, of the sector, of a lot of professionals, and for the new generations who are coming, definitely I hope that they will put the person and put the curse on the center. We will need time, but it's important, it's difficult, and when you have the opportunity to have power, and how can you manage this power in a good thing, on a, in, in a good way, or in a bad way? So. Now that we are here, that we have voice, so we have to take into account all these needs, all these subjects, because 
we can change things little by little. Thank you. What about Kuhn, Lucio, Sebastian? What do you have, Kuhn? I see you reaching for the mic. Go for it. I had a bad joke in my head. <laughs> I'm not going to say it. I'm the king of the bad jokes. And, uh, um, for me, care, it's not about uh, women or, or, or whatever. It's, uh, care is very, very inclusive. Uh, and you have to see it uh, not in a binary or, 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 or a universe. It's, it's very inclusive for, for everyone. Uh, we have to take uh, care. And sometimes we have a new member of our team and there are some issues. And there's someone uh, reacting. Are we an inclusive uh, uh, organization when we still working with with her or do we have to to ask her to leave and it's very it enters really as a co coordinator it enters what what do we have to do because she she, she has a, a bit an autistic uh, uh, spectrum chisel um, and that's so important, that care, for me, it's, it's, it's inclusive. Uh, that's my first reaction. Thank you. Um, Lucho, do you have something to add to this idea of care having gendered implications and how do we balance this a bit? Uh... Uh, in our work, maybe I, I don't think I have the solution. Uh, of course not. Uh, I, uh, I very much hear what uh, everyone has just shared. And maybe I can uh, make a link back to a circus in some kind of way. Um, uh, sometimes I work with groups of people, uh, artists, um, whatever. And I can ask them, what is, uh, what is circus? How would you define circus? So you get this list of words with performance and this and that. And one of the things that always stands out, a lot of them you can take away because it also applies to other living arts and it also applies to this and it also applies to that. So what would really define circus or what is one of the words that would really stay and that is very particular in circus? And there's this sense of community. And uh, uh, yeah, this I think is strong. Uh, and it, uh, yeah, it connects to the idea of this, of this shared responsibility, uh, that uh, the responsibility or the burden uh, is not always on the person that requires care the most. Yeah, and this is something that I think circus can be good at. Thank you so much for that. Um... Emily, Sebastian, do you have something to add to this discussion? Sebastian, yes, please. Hey, you can say me again the question, please? Of course. Um, I, the question has to do with the fact that care is a gendered word, meaning that um, a lot of it comes a lot of feminist philosophers in particular have talked about how care is something that is required of women. It's not asked of them, it's required mostly that they give it. They don't, uh, sort of a lack of choice, a lack of option. It's not optional for many women to give care, it's, it's a requirement. Um, and so the question that I would l have brought to the group is how do we make sure it's not only one group of people that are being the most burdened or the most considered responsible for care? How do we share care more equally across to all of the sector in general? Yeah. It's a really difficult uh, question um, because I come in from the another context, uh, Latin America. Um, my first reference is my mother. Uh, and we will we we will uh, will be the first always. In in South America, it's human uh, 
crecer, grow, thank you, uh, without the father. It's normal. And I super agree for the human, the life is completely different and difficult for the men, to the men. And I think we are not equal in our in my context. And uh, I think it's super difficult to have a one clear position for me. I think uh, I have to 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 watch, to listen in the 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 people. Um, of course, uh, um, we have to give some tools to women for to work, for example, different, give a space, give time and give power. Um, I don't know, uh, sorry, but uh, I don't have the, the, the answer clear. It's difficult um, to say it have to be like that or have to be like that. It, we have to understand the context and the history and the, the year I born in dictadura, for example. Um, in my home, we were our mother, my brother, and me. And she worked every day, all day, a lot, a lot, a lot. And now I have to, to take my responsibility and turn, change the, the way with my kids, for example, in my context now in our center where the, the women feel important. For example, a little small examples. Uh, I don't want to talk about our pro my project. It's not really important, I think. But it's important to have a space, for example, for yoga only for women. women, women. Uh, to space to create a secure space and comfortable and, and create that space. It's not magic. You have to work for that. You have to work with respect. You have to talk with another. When you look, when you see something wrong, you have to go there and say, "Stop! This is not the way." You have to be really attentive. Um, I don't know. In my country, we are living uh, um, really big changes now. Um, for me, it's my comfortable. Uh, place. I feel me comfortable when the ocean is really <laughs> moving. I don't feel me comfortable when everything is in calm. I feel me comfortable when everything is in the really happening. You know. Um, I don't know. I don't. Ho I don't have the answer really clear, but yeah. I'm trying to explain it myself. Yeah, thank you. I think I think that you are. What I'm hearing you say is two different things, which is that, of course, I'm asking a very broad question, which of course has cultural implications and is very much tied to everyone's local, national, and cultural context. Um, and I think when you're explaining that one thing that you do as part of your um, work in the center that you run is provide um, embodied workshops to local women, it's also, I think, Im implicating your organization in what Fabien Brugère called la chaîne du care, the chain of care, which is that you're seeing that there's a, in your particular context, women are burdened in their personal lives with taking care, and it's a way for you to take care of the carers and be a part of the, the chain of care within your, your local community as an organization. Yes, 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 absolutely. I think sometimes it's much more important, important the question than the answer. Um, now we have to give a space to, for the questions. Uh, Emilia, do you have something to add quickly uh, before we try and wrap up? 
Peut-être qu'il yeah, faut des, yeah. des salles de yoga pour les mm. hommes aussi. Pour Maybe we need to have a yoga, yoga uh, <laughs> places non, non, uh, for guys as well, for men. Moi, évidemment, uh, uh, si on parle du care, sorry, if we speak uh, about care, et, um, et to et me, it is a notion uh, that includes both uh, men, women, and Donc, all these pieces that um, are around us. And uh, I think, uh, moreover, today, we'll, we'll have to learn to do things differently and to really take care of everything around us. Alors, uh, I think we will all be around and more than happy to continue the discussion and talk with you. Hope I'm not saying the wrong thing for on behalf of you guys. Um, in closing, I would like each of you to complete the following sentence. As an arts professional, for me, care is fill in the blank. It can be one word, it can be a few words. There's no wrong answer. It's just a quick way to wrap up and to, to finish the sentence. So again, the sentence is, as an arts professional, for me, care is finish the sentence. Who wants to start? Kuhn, go ahead. Evidence. <laughs> Evidence is your word, okay? Thank you. Empathy. Empathy. Care is empathy, okay? Peut-être dans le micro pour les... Maybe in the mic. Une question incontournable. An unavoidable question. <laughs> to be a good listener. To be a good listener, okay, thank you. Uh, I would go, you're not I, miked. Ah, I would go. go back to uh, collective responsibility. Emily, you've got the final word. <laughs> Taking care of our space. We're done. Thank you so much, everyone. It was a pleasure. <laughs>
I think you know the color red. If not, just follow my face, okay? So at 2.30 we meet and then we catch up the bus and then we go together. If you miss the bus, it's going to be quite tricky for you to reach that place. You can, but probably you're going to reach us while we're finished, okay? And then the third path, it's the networking one. From 3 to 6, you're, we're going to meet at 2.45 and you're going to follow a person holding a black umbrella and the person is Laura, okay? Laura, black, Stefan, red, King, yeah, yellow. I think it's good. I have a last information to tell you for tonight. I don't know if it's in the slide, but I will tell you anyway. So there is a boat party tonight, as you know. Exactly, we are very excited about this. Um, let's go through the day first, okay? And uh, we have to meet at the boat at 8. We enter between 8 and 9. The boat leaves at 9 sharp. If you're not there, we'll just wave hello from the boat. Okay? So, sorry to say, but there are some... If Since we're going to go through the Seine, we cannot allow ourselves to go on a different time, okay? So, we meet at 8 over there. Drinks and food will be provided to you, music and many surprises, so I hope you come. So now that I've done my bit, and there is a place for the general director... Next slide, please. The general director of artistic creation of the Ministry of Culture, I invite Monsieur Christopher Miles to join us for a few closing words. A vous. Well... Hello, bonjour, guten tag, bon dia, buenos dias, buongiorno, guten tag. I'm Christopher Meyers in charge of performing arts and visual arts in the Ministry of Culture. Ladies and gentlemen, and other genders categories, uh, c'est vraiment un plaisir d'être ici aujourd'hui avec It's vous. It's really a pleasure to be here with you today to celebrate this 20th anniversary. Happy birthday, Circo Strada. And it's a pleasure as well because we are here at the La Villette, which is for France, one of the main sites for circus expression and outdoor arts. And it's been 40 years now. I'd like to say a few words about what brings us together and what brings you together. The circus and arts, street arts are special places. They welcome differences in terms of physical and social. It's a place of communion where everyone can meet without judgment to discover marvel, Magic. And it's a moment where everyone can forget their differences during the show. Performance. These are places the Ministry of the Culture for at least more than 40 years now has wanted to bring support. In terms of, and one proof of that is the Ministry of Culture wished that last weekend to open this the sessions for the heritage that Raphael Boitel's circus uh, show was presented in the Palais Royal, which is the seat of the Ministry of Culture in France. Contemporary circus and the art and outdoor arts have really shown um, their vitality, their creativity has been under strain, and now for, as for all performing arts, they're putting into them in the position to confront a huge shift in society. The earth is changing, the ecological, environmental transition is also something we're all going through, and culture uh, is now based on Uh, other means and has this in mind as well to help people go through that transition. We're talking about considering the world that is and the world that's in becoming. For circus and outdoor arts, this proximity with audiences, this capacity to bring together different generations, this relationship which frees bodies and spirits helps us work on feeling awe and marvel through many disciplines 
far above the DNA of its, uh, initial disciplines about moving your bodies through the public space and on stage now. You are building in a relationship with plastic arts, dance, theater, drama. There's diversity that is uh, owned and exemplary in the opening up of Europe and international context. In this context, it seems important to say that we are wanting to work with you on the issues that are at the heart of your mission, questions of care, safety, diversity, at the heart of your artistic creation, so that all the differences can be expressed, all the otherness can be expressed. We want to support your sustainability with exemplary dialogue between your various communities. I just want to bring a message of hope and trust to the society that's unfolding before your eyes and the public that is behind you. And now you're the second generation of creators that's constantly reinventing yourselves. For emerging artists today, the Ministry of Culture in France will always be present for those creators for outdoor arts and circus arts to give this message of hope, trust, and this Republican message that in all levels of arts and street arts and circus, there's a capacity to integrate and imagine together what can be the possibility for a young child to be present at a, at a show and say, yes, I recognize myself there. I can relate to this in the street. And tomorrow, I can imagine my life differently, my creativity, and I could be recognized as what I am and what I create. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, the translators. I'm not going to give my thanks again to everybody. Let's have lunch. Come on. Thank you. OK, morning sessions are closed now, but not the radio stream still yet. We we'll have just listened to Christopher Miles, who is the general director of artist in creation of the French Ministry, and I told you before that we would talk a little bit more with Fabienne Brugère, who was the, the keynote of, of the morning of this uh, meeting. And for an exclusive short, more words, we wanted in English, or in French? In English Fabienne. In English? You speak uh, English, yes, of course. But uh, you should you have read in English yes. because this ethic of care came from yes, the States, of course. And the States, you told us, huh? Reagan time. Like mean hard time could have been before in such a time, <laughs> but you don't want to talk uh, mainly about politics. Mm -hmm. You you you've listened to people from the art world now, from the circus world, talked. Uh, are you like me, impressed by the fact that they always mention their family? <laughs> yes, um, in a way it's interesting because uh, the. They mention their family, and of course, uh, women mention their family. So it's a way of uh, explaining that care is a gender question. Not only, it, 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 would, it must be the question of all the humanity, in fact. But, as usual, uh, women practice care yeah. in the history. So, uh, yes, it's... Uh, and we are still stuck into it, huh? Yes. When we remember somebody, but uh, it, we know also that family is a place where there is no care, because it's also the, the place where there is a lot of violence. So, before caring, maybe it would be good to deconstruct the family. Of course. Um, it's an institution. Yes, of course. A family is an institution, and um, a family is crossed by the question of gender 
is crossed by the possibility of violence, by all sorts of asymmetries. An asymmetry when it is a heterosexual family between a male and female, an asymmetry between parents and children. And so care is a way of uh, introducing justice, of introducing reciprocity in relations which can be inhabited by violence, by power, and so on. And family uh, is, not, is not only love. <laughs> family is a violence power too. Like circus is not only to get together, it can be also, and we know it, the artistic world is a very competitive work world and uh, it, I was thinking of what you said before you talk about a sort of revolution and you were asking for new institutions right so uh, the question uh, we have uh, to ask now and maybe you have some answers what kind of institution uh, do you think of certainly maybe a uh, Someone that looks from outside, because when we are inside, what do we see? I don't know. Maybe you have some example to talk about. Uh, first of all, it's important to, to mention that um, all artists, uh, all people who work in the cultural sector has, have really to do have really to do with neoliberalism and all the question of flexibility, precarity, vulnerability, and so on, and competition too. Um, but uh, they have what to be ready for anything. Yes, we ask them. They have to be ready for anything. But uh, uh, considering that point. That, um, that neoliberalism is very stark in uh, the artistic field. Uh, it's important to, to imagine uh, the possibility of, uh, of new institutions, um, which, would be, uh, which would be no, no neoliberal institutions. And um, the best way to get, uh, to get new institutions which would take care of uh, individuals um, is, uh, is, to, is to have people uh, who have imagination, who create uh, um, collective responsibility, who, who try to, to get together new ideas, new compositions of the bodies and so on, new sort of, uh, of scenes or spectacles and so on. So in a way, yes, it's uh, outside the existing institution, but it has to be connect, connected. Uh, yes. The to link be connected is, is central. With, uh, with the institutions where, which exist. I mean that institutions um, have to listen. Is there the, any the, the, example? of this work you've uh, discovered in, in your experience, in your readings, in maybe it was in other society, like maybe not the modern occidental society, because we know philosophy is uh, an open world. Mm. As an example, uh, I, I would say that in, it's, um, it's important to have uh, um, small structures of, uh, of workers, of cultural workers, which would be there for really for, for listening uh, to artists, for listening to, to groups of artists. And uh, that's what was explained during, uh, during that morning, um, artists, need to have uh, dialogues for their creations, they need to have uh, answers, they need to have possibilities. And so it means, it means in institutions, it means people who can uh, listen to them, who can take them into account in a way. That, that's something which is uh, really important and it's a way of uh, 
of taking care of the imagination of uh, the artist. Because as usual, uh, we are so with uh, technology, we are so with bureaucracy and so on, that, uh, that we forget that, uh, that artists come with their imagination and that we have to, to welcome uh, that imagination. And to give a certain price. In a way, because yes, we have this of word always with money. It's a money. question of price. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and price is not is not only money. It's in a way money. We have to pay for having people who listen to uh, to the artists, uh, to to all sorts of of creation, and to render them uh, real in a way. Care is not free. Care is not free. <laughs> <laughs> it's not gratis. Thank you very much. Uh, for your extra exclusive talk on the Weber radio of Fresh. I have to point out that your book is called uh, L'Ethique du Caire and it's a big success because it has been reedited, as we yes, say. Yes, and it has been translated in English, yes. in uh, Italian, in Spanish, in Portuguese, and in Japanese. And it's going to be translated in, uh, I don't know, yeah. In Romanian, which, Romanian. Means, which means there is a big uh, interest. Yes, and that's very interesting because uh, 20 years ago, <coughs> you wrote I, when it I in began, uh, when 2011. I, yes, no, but 20 years ago when I began to, to study care yes. in, a paper, in a paper by a journal which is called Esprit, which is a French journal. Yeah, it's a, uh, a French I, revue. Voilà, it's a revue French revue. When I began to, to study care, uh, it was really no interest for, for, for anybody in France. And, and it's, it's really incredible uh, to, to notice uh, that today it becomes so important in many fields of, uh, of our society. Because we, we understood, and maybe because of the pandemic, that our society yes. were sick. The, the pandemic rendered care visible, but it was there. Yes, the suffering before, was there. Yes, before the pandemic. Yeah, thank you. So it's good to know that your book is translated yes. for us all over the world to be able to read it. Thank you, Fabienne Brugère. Thank you. We will uh, leave you for this morning and meet uh, uh, you um, for this fresh 20 anniversary of Circle Strada. Tomorrow, uh, let's meet at 10 o'clock. We will be in the smallest circus of the world. I say hello to Fabienne, leaving the studio here in, in La Villette this morning. So tomorrow, 10 o'clock, same radio, same streaming, same team. Today, with Bocard and uh, Clément recording the, the streaming that uh, with all around you can get it all over the place. I mentioned for you too, if you need that, you will find much more info, information on uh, the website of circostrada.org and um, the podcast called Oran Fresh that was uh, produced before the event by uh, Mike Camus. So, I'm Aude Lavie, French journalist, as you can hear. Um, reporting live from La Villette in Paris. See you tomorrow morning, 10 o'clock. Have a nice day.